see Marina's cake. I'm getting out of the way. Okay, <laughs> let's see Marina's cake. And after hundreds of hours in the kitchen, the result? A magnificent multi-tiered cake decorated with thousands of handmade edible sugar flowers and sugar beads and accented with caramel apple truffles. The, you know, beginning of wedding cakes evolved from England where people used to bring um, fruit and, and nut cakes as almost a gift to the couple. People, I believe, used to just think wedding cakes is something they had to have. And now it's an element that people really get excited about. I think the, the main reason for that is the exposure they've gotten on TV. Um, it used to be just bridal magazines and celebrity weddings were really the only new source of information for wedding cakes, um, but that has definitely changed. I bake one day, put the cakes together on a second day, and then start decorating on day three. So I am, in some strange way, using my previous careers. Um, fashion and theater are really, you know, great sources of inspiration to me. I'm always just kind of looking for visual cues that are going to personalize something specifically for a couple that I can use as inspiration to translate into a cake design. One of the, my most favorite cakes ever that I got to design was for Keegan Gerhardt and Lisa Bailey. Keegan is the host of Food Network Challenge and um, he asked me to make a wedding cake for him and his wedding was in the Hill Country in Texas. The way I design my cakes is that the majority of the work, if not all of it, is done in the kitchen prior to delivery. That's mainly so the cake can get there just within the hour prior to guests entering the room so it's out of refrigeration for the least amount of time necessary. You have to take into account once guests enter the room, it's still going to be a few hours on display before the cake's even cut or looked at. So to try and minimize that lead time is ideal. I usually ask people to bring their invitation or a picture of their dress or bridesmaid's dress or flowers or um, monogram, design motif, anything that they can bring me to the table. For the most part, I usually am able to design something, sketch it, and have them walk out the door with something in their hand within that hour. I always recommend that they wait to meet with me until they've made venue and color and floral and design decisions. Cupcakes have definitely increased in popularity over the past several years. You're physically touching every single serving multiple times as opposed to icing up four tiers of cake that can serve an equivalent amount of people. Pricing for me, cupcakes often are, are more expensive than a tiered cake. A cake with fresh flowers is obviously going to be less expensive than a cake with handmade sugar flowers. Cakes covered in buttercream are going to be less than fondant. Right now, I start at $6 a serving, and that's basically for a plain ice buttercream cake that your florist can decorate on site. You know, wedding cakes for hotels have a pretty big profit margin. It's an easy way for them to make money. Um, it's rare that they have a pastry chef who is able to pull off something that is comparable to a cake designer. What sets a cake designer apart is the artistic side. Cake toppers have, have definitely changed. It's, it's pretty rare that you see a bride and groom on top of a cake anymore. More contemporary toppers now, consistently I see monograms, um, rhinestone monograms, um, but more so than anything people just opt for flowers on top of the cake. I always do tell people though that as far as gum paste flowers go, while they are edible, they're not necessarily enjoyable. So professional wedding planners should have, you know, a certain vocabulary available to them when discussing cake designs with their clients. Buttercream, fondant, whipped cream, ganache, those are, are probably the most common icings for cakes. It's referred to as candy clay sometimes, and basically it's creating um, a very fondant-like substance out of chocolate, whether it be white chocolate or dark chocolate. Fresh fruit um, occasionally is used as a decoration if it's part of the, the couple's design motif. One of the most common things you hear is, oh my god, that's so beautiful, I'm never going to be able to cut it. And my response is usually, that's what it's for. One of the, the key things that I appreciate wedding coordinators for is they're usually one of the first ones to encourage people to spend the little extra money on lighting. I will say the one trend that seems to be pretty predominant is personalizing um, a cake to a couple's wedding. So whether that be using the dress as um, inspiration or the venue, lots of ruching and embroidery, lace work 
um, can be replicated in either fondant or gum paste, um, lots of royal icing piping. One thing that can be really helpful when working with a wedding coordinator is to have one point of contact. They need to understand that all communication is going through that wedding coordinator. One of the big components for me that I appreciate is knowing a couple's budget in advance. I think that's an area that a wedding coordinator is, you know, a great buffer and it, it allows the couple not to have to discuss it directly with the vendor. I personally think for anything over 150, that's a great way to go. There's always ways to kind of manipulate a budget. That's why it's helpful to kind of know it in advance. One thing that wedding planners do not need to send me is their timeline for every second of the day. And, and ultimately, the only thing I need to know is when and where to be and a way to contact you if something goes wrong. I think the key to the most successful wedding coordinators I know is to use vendors that you know and trust and can deliver a quality product and kind of staying out of their way, taking a step back and letting them do their thing. And um, those are my favorite wedding planners to work with.